Hi, I'm Rob Cousin. Welcome to my shop. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. Cutting dovetails is a matter of having a really good saw. Whether you like to admit that or not, or whether you're willing to spend the money, that's up to you. But in order to do this kind of a job on a dovetail, you have to have a saw that will cut a perfectly straight line. I'll show you what I mean. Straight is defined as the shortest distance between two points. That means that when your saw starts to go down through that wood, it should continue on the path itself, meaning it's not going to veer to the right or to the left. It's going to continue on that path. Now, you can't correct midstream. That means you've got to be able to start it with precision and then go from the top down to the baseline. But the first thing I want to do is tell you what you can do if you can't afford or don't want to spend the money on a really good saw like that. This is actually the saw that I started with. Not very expensive at all. Has what I would call a file handle. But I made some modifications to this that would allow me eventually to be able to come in and get good, accurate saw cuts. Doesn't cut as fast, but it still cuts nice and straight. Well, I picked this up at a local hardware store and I don't think I paid any more than $20 for it. Some of the problems with it, it's rather flimsy. It flexes rather badly right there at the point where the handle and the brass and the back meet. It had too much set. The teeth weren't properly sharpened. And there was no registration, meaning every time you picked it up, you were forced to follow a line because you might pick it up a different way each time. So let's go through some of the steps. First thing we want to do is we want to file rip teeth. We're ripping wood when we cut dovetails. It only makes sense to have rip teeth on the saw. A lot of times the inexpensive saws come with crosscut teeth, and I can't tell you why they do that. Make yourself a little saw vise. Nothing more than a couple pieces of plywood, a few bits of hardwood, and a piano hinge. The idea is to pinch the saw blade right up close to the teeth. So I would go ahead and put that in the vise. Put my saw in, and I want it so that the teeth just clear the top of the vise. I would say no more than what you see right there, which to the very top of the teeth would be maybe an eighth of an inch. You want to have them well supported up here so they don't vibrate. Now for a file, I use a, either a 5 inch or a 4 inch double extra slim taper file. You can buy them for 5 or 6 dollars. And I want the face of the tooth to be filed perpendicular to the run of the blade so there is no fleam or angle on the face of the tooth. It's perpendicular, as I mentioned, to the run of the blade. And then the cutting face I want to be have standing at 0 degrees or straight up and down. That's going to give me a good aggressive cut. And the easiest way to do that is to set a square on there, put the side of the file up against the square. Now what I do is I simply hold my finger right there so that I know where that tooth or where that uh, blade is in relation to my hand. Now you can also come in and paint the teeth if you need with a felt tip marker. And what that'll do is just make it so that each time or as you file, if you accidentally stop, or lose your position, you can go back and tell which tooth was touched. I'm going to go back and do this again. Set that so that it's perpendicular. Set the tooth, uh, the, you file in the first tooth, file once or twice, and now I always drag it back in the same gullet because I find that if you file and then lift up, trying to set it back down that same gullet is just too hard, especially the older you get and you can't see anymore. So I go forward and back in the same gullet, skip over to the next one, do the same amount of strokes, go to the next one. Little bit of pressure against the face of the tooth. When you're doing this, you're actually filing the top of one tooth and the face of the other. And I'd go right on down. So if I, a saw like this wouldn't take any more than five to seven minutes. And that I would consider slow. All right, so once you're done that, we're going to adjust the set. Set refers to the fact that each tooth is alternately bent, one to one side, the next one to the opposite side, so that the curve you leave, that groove in the wood, has to be wider than the blade. 
If it isn't, you'll only get in there an eighth of an inch and it will bind. If it's too much set, if the teeth are bent too far out, what happens is you get a wide kerf and the blade sits there and it just wobbles back and forth and it's very difficult to steer and you don't get a nice straight cut. So the easiest way to adjust the set is to use, uh, I prefer a diamond stone because it doesn't wear and I'm using a 1200 grit or an oil, an oil stone. If you try to use this on a water stone, it'll wear your stone quite badly. What I do is I simply set the blade down and I put some pressure with my opposite thumb right here, just in from the teeth, and I drag that across the stone just once, flip it over, and do the exact same thing on the other side. After one pass, come over to my piece of wood and I make a test cut. Now I'm watching for two things. I want to see how neatly that saw fits in the kerf. I want, I actually prefer to have it touching on both sides. Can't jam and I don't want too much slop. I also want to make sure that it's cutting straight. If it's drifting to one side or to the other, that means that the teeth on that side are out too far. There's too much set. So you may have to come back and just dress one side. Come back and check it again. Make several cuts, especially if you're new at this. You determine whether or not there is indeed any drift, or correct the drift so there no longer is any. And when I make that cut, I can see that it's nice and straight right from there down to the bottom. It may not be perpendicular, you've got to work on that. Alright, there's two things. Actually, that's most of it. The third thing is kind of a personal preference issue. I like to have a saw that when I pick it up, it registers. What happens is, sooner or later, gravity will teach you what perpendicular is. So on a saw like this, it has a round handle. What I had done, I cut a little flat spot so that every time I pick it up, that flat spot would register against the base of my thumb and I would eventually get to a point where I could feel perpendicular and I had the benefit of the saw always registering the same way. So what you can do is take your saw. Now I've got a coarse rasp and you can just go in there, kind of take a marker or pencil or something and kind of get some idea as to where you want that to be and you can go in there and with a series of cuts you can shape a flat spot and then I wouldn't go too far before I would stop and check and see if that's going to find that spot that will always register and you can go back and adjust it as needed and then you may want to come in with some fine sandpaper or a finer rasp and get it to the point where it suits you perfectly. Now. Do those three things, make sure it's straight, and if it isn't, you're going to have to go in and straighten it, and the easiest way to do that is to simply put two blocks of wood on your bench and use a clamp. So if I've got a bit of a bend right here, I would put a block here and a block here and a little bit of pressure in the middle, bend it, bend it, take it off, check it, just go back and forth until you get it right. Slight bends in the blade aren't that big of a deal anyway, if you consider how small amount of the blade is actually in the wood at any given time. Practice with that until you can do it. Make that saw do exactly what you want. And as you get better with this, what you'll eventually find is a better saw will make the job even easier. Now this is softwood. Cuts relatively easily. You get into some maple, some oak, you may find that this little saw just doesn't quite cut it the way you want. It has a lot of flex, and that's where you may want to move up and get a better saw. Some of the features that I built into my saw, and we actually make these here in our shop. I have a pistol grip handle that helps so that every time you pick up that saw, it registers exactly the same, and you'll eventually learn what angles are what just from the feel of the saw. Second thing is the weight. Third, we have little tiny teeth out here to help start the saw precisely, and that's the first thing you have to be able to do with the dovetail saw. So if you've got a line on your board that you have to follow, You've got to be able to come in there and with precision start the saw curve right where that line is. In this case, preserving the line. Second most important thing you have to be able to do is make a perfectly plumb cut. What I mean by that, when you look at the pins on this second half of the joint, if these cuts aren't perfectly perpendicular, the joint simply doesn't work. If and you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.